Hi, this is Vicki Robinson, and today I'd like to show you my method for creating a stamped silhouette from uh, my pictures for use in my layouts. I'm going to be using uh, Photoshop CC 2015 right now, but then I'll also show you how you can do the same thing in Photoshop Elements. As you can see here, I've got a page that I've done with my It's About Time kit. This is my mom, probably my very, very favorite picture of her. Um, it's actually her high school graduation picture, and I think it makes a very lovely silhouette. So I'd like to show you how to do that. Uh, so let's get started. So as you can see, this is the original photo. Um, it's quite old. I've scanned it in so there's a lot of sort of dust artifacts and some fold going on here. Um, I believe this, as I said, I think this is her high school photograph. So that would have been sometime in the mid to late 1940s. Um, the photographer has used it looks like some sort of vignetting kind of processing so you see it's very soft around here around her hair and the edges of the photograph and what I really want is a little bit more contrast for this technique so the first thing that I'm going to do and the first thing I always do is make a duplicate of the image now I'm going to hold down my command key that's a control key on a PC and then press the J key so command or control J and that will make a duplicate of the image and then I'm just going to hide the visibility of this original image. Now as I said I want a little bit more contrast here and there's some darks here that I'm going to see if I can't get um, at least lighten up a little bit. There are a lot of different ways to do that and uh, for this particular instance though I'm going to do a brightness contrast adjustment. So I'll come up to my me uh, menu, image, adjustments, brightness and contrast I'm going to try to lighten up her face just a little tiny bit. There you go. And then I'm going to adjust the contrast. And if you'll watch here, you'll see that this pinky area sort of disappears uh, quite a bit. And the contrast is a lot more stark. And for this technique, that's going to work best. So say OK. Now you'll also see, as I mentioned, that there's some dust and things here. I'm not going to worry about this right now for this process. So I'm ready to do my little technique here. You just go to Image, Adjustments, and come down to Threshold. And as you can see, this has immediately turned my image a very stark black and white, which is what I'm looking for, sort of a stamped sort of effect. I do see that this is a little dark here around her nose. I'm not liking that very much. So I'm going to play with this slider until I get the image uh, the way that I like it. You can see if I drag it all the way over to the left, uh, all of the blacks are gone. If I drag it all the way over to the right, all of the whites are gone. So my goal is to get it somewhere in the middle where I feel like the image is uh, it pleasing to me. And what I found I like best on this photo is to show just a little bit of this shading here on her neck. Uh, mm, I like that. It looks good. So that's good enough for me. Say OK. Now at this point in your image, if you see something you think is going to be distracting, you can just go ahead and use your eraser tool. And I've got my eraser and a small round hard brush here. And I'm just going to write on here and just erase this. Now you have a couple of options for what you, oops, sorry. You have a couple of options for what you can do next. The first thing you can do is simply drag this image onto um, a background paper. So I'm switching to my move tool. Uh, and then I'm just dragging this onto the one of the papers in my kit. Because uh, this is a stamped image, I'm not going to worry too much about distortion, and I want this to be quite a bit bigger, so I'm just going to enlarge this a little bit, especially so you can see um, what I'm doing, and then say OK here. Now, the next thing you need to do is change the blend mode of this, uh, of this layer. If you change it to multiply, multiply uh, removes the white from an image. So as you can see right here, um, I didn't have to do any other futzing with this picture. This is actually just fine. Although I see when I uh, did my conversion here, it does have a, a little bit of uh, the black line here from the original photo. And I'm just going to take my eraser tool and get rid of that. 
So you see that worked pretty well, just as it is. And it, again, because it is sort of a stamped image and not supposed to be uh, very, very detailed, I can go ahead and, and make that quite a bit larger, whoops, without just without um, really uh, damaging the look of the photo at all. So that's the first option that we have. Let me hide this. And let's go back to our original photo. The other thing that you can do is make a brush out of this if you think you're going to want to use it later on. So I'm just going to come up here to Edit, Define Brush Preset. Now, if when you do this, Brush Preset is grayed out and you can't uh, create a brush from it, it's just generally because your image is too big. Just go back in and, and make your image size smaller. For Photoshop Elements and for versions of Photoshop, I think it was CS5 and below, your brush can't be any larger than 25 by 25, 2500 by 2500 pixels. So you'll need to reduce your image to at least that size. Once you get into CS6 and then all the CC versions of Photoshop, you can actually have brushes up to, I think it's 5000 pixels. So just know that if this is grayed out, you just need to make your image a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and define the brush preset. I'm not going to bother to give it a name right now. Say OK. Let's come back into my uh, paper, make a new layer, choose my brush, which is here. And oops, I made a new group instead of a new layer. Sorry about that. New layer. Going to make my brush um, Quite a bit bigger, and you can do that by uh, click uh, by pressing the right bracket key. Make it smaller by uh, pressing the left bracket key. Oh, I guess I should have gotten rid of that line. You can see it's still there, but for this purpose, it's okay. Let's just do this right here. So, there you go. As I said, very quick, very easy. Um, now let's do another. Let's do another one to show you. Here's a selfie that I took on my Max uh, web camera. As you can see, the lighting wasn't great. There's some redness here. Um, I did manipulate it a little bit to blur out the background because I've used this for one of my avatars for a while. But as you can see, there's some redness here. Uh, so it's not a really, really great photograph, but for purposes of this kind of exercise, turning these into silhouettes, it really doesn't make any difference because that kind of detail is not going to show. Now, in this case, I may not want the background uh, to show up in my silhouette. Remember, in my mom's picture here, the original picture, there really wasn't a background that I had to deal with. In this picture here, there's sort of a busy background going on. And if you want to take the time to uh, remove that, it's actually really simple to do because you don't have to be very detailed for this purposes. I'm going to go into my selection tool, and it's the quick selection tool that I'm using. And let's pick, a, this has got a small brush here. Let's see if this is how this works here. See how if this gives me what I'm looking for. I got like a uh, you know a 29 30 size brush and I'm just going to start selecting the areas that I'm going to want to keep in my finished brush. Around the hairline there must be, you see that's fuzzy there in the corner there and that's why it couldn't distinguish the difference between the colors. That's why it went too far. Oops, did it again. So I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key. It's uh, and continue to brush away to take back that area that it just added in. Alter option lets you use the same brush to remove, and there's a little extra here. Now I'm taking my finger off and adding this bit of the hair back in really slowly up around here. Also helps, by the way, a trick is to pick your mouse up partial weight through so that um, in case it does grab too much, if you need to back up a step, you really don't have to go back too far. Just, just one little step. Ah, it did it again. And the reason why that's happening in this photo is I added this blurry background, and so it's blurred the distinction between my hair and the, the countertop here. So again, holding my Alt or Option key down to remove this section of the selection. Come down here, come all the way down here. Here's a bit I missed. And I don't want that little pointy thing here. But as you can see, this is not a perfect selection. Um, it's If I were going to use this for something else where I wanted my picture to show, I'd be much more careful with this. For our technique, though, it doesn't make any difference. The only thing I'm going to fix is that it looks like I double 
I doubled on here a little bit, so just add that back in. Okay, so I've got this generalized outline along my image. I'm going to, again, I'm going to duplicate my selection, and you do that by holding the Command or Control key uh, and hitting J, Command or Control J. We'll make a duplicate, hide that, and there you can see there's a rough selection about me. Let's get me out of your face. <laughs> I'll make me a little smaller. So now I'm going to do the same technique. I'm coming to Image, Adjustments, and um, Threshold, and just adjust the slider to get back as much detail as you want. So you see the sort of the redness in my face that was captured by the bad lighting in my kitchen? Totally gone. There you go. Easy enough. Now again, you can make this a brush or you can drag this onto your uh, We'll do that. We'll drag this onto the paper again and change the overlay mode to multiply. Make this as big as you want to make it. Now there is one thing I did want to show you. Not all photographs are perfect for this. Um, any photograph that has a lot of white in it is going to be problematic because as you can see, the threshold changed the image to black and white. So if there's a lot of white, you may not like the intended result. Uh, and I just wanted to show you how you could still get a passable silhouette out of that if that's what you wanted to do. This is one of the photos uh, from my wedding. And as you can see, again, it's been scanned. We didn't have digital photos back in those days. So there's a lot of dust in here. Uh, there's not a lot of detail in this bouquet that I'm holding here. And I'm uh, really a pale skinned person. So you can see that my dress sort of melds into my uh, my neck and my face here. But let's just see what happens if we were to do that technique on here anyway. I'm going to duplicate the image, Control or Command J, hide that bottom image, and um, well, let's see if, if changing the contrast actually helps anyway. Let's go into, oops, sorry, Image, Adjustment, Brightness and Contrast. Let's see what happens if I do try to adjust the contrast at all here. Uh, that makes it worse, so the right's making it worse. A little more definition here. Oh, that gives me a little bit more definition, but I already know from experience that all this white is going to get basically a white image. What I'm trying to do is maybe get my lips there and my eyes a little bit darker so it shows up more. Say OK. Let's go to Image Adjustment Threshold. Uh, there you go. So let's muck with this just a little tiny bit. See this direction is not doing what I want, so let's go to this direction, see if I can get just a little bit more definition. Uh, often thick lips and thick eyes there, but oh, there you go. That's bringing back some face definition. So my hair disappears. Um, the bouquet really disappears, but you still got a face and you got an idea that I'm leaning up against something. So let's see what happens when I pull this onto my paper. Uh, switch to my move tool, drag this up to my paper, lay it down here, let's get rid of this Vicky, and let's make this one a little bit bigger. You can see what's happening. Now, I used the screen, the um, multiply mode, if you remember, on this to make the white disappear. We need to do the opposite on this. If the white disappears, you're just going to get um, an outline of me on a black frame. And that's absolutely not what we want. So in this case, we're going to do the opposite. Uh, multiply hides the whites, and the screen blending mode hides the blacks. So you can see, if I make this even larger, that's actually kind of cute. And even though it's not clear to you from looking at this, this was my wedding photo and what's going on in the picture, it kind of makes a, a, a cool silhouette. Um, what I would do if I, if, this, if I was actually going to use this is switch to my eraser tool and then go through and erase these bits over here since they really don't help the photo any. Okay, um, you could change the color of this, add a color overlay if you want to, if you made it into a brush. Uh, then obviously you could brush down, stamp down in different colors. So uh, that's my quick and easy method for creating a silhouette um, in Photoshop. Let me take you over to Photoshop Elements and show you how you would do that same technique there. Okay, I'm over here in Photoshop Elements. This is version 13. I have done these steps in Elements 9 as well. So all the 
the steps are the same in I think pretty much any version of Photoshop Elements. The biggest difference is if you're using Elements 9, um, the interface looks a lot different, but, but really that's the only difference, at least for purposes of this demonstration. So I've got this uh, same photo here, and uh, this time instead of uh, extracting my head and shoulders as we did in the uh, Photoshop demonstration. We're just going to work with this as it is. But I am going to duplicate the layer first. Uh, Command or Control J to duplicate and hide the bottom layer here. Now I may want to adjust the brightness and contrast. This particular uh, picture doesn't really need it, but if you wanted to do that you'd come up to Image, I'm sorry, it's under Enhance, Adjust Lighting, Brightness and Contrast, and you can play with that a little bit if you want. Maybe make the contrast way strong. Way, 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 way strong. How about somewhere in the middle? And say OK. Now we're ready to um, do that threshold step. In Elements, you're going to find Threshold under Filters. So we come to the Filter menu and choose Adjustment and then say Threshold. And again, you see it's done exactly the way it worked in Photoshop, the full version of Photoshop. I've got this little slider where I can adjust uh, the blacks and the whites. Now, as you can see, what this is what I was talking about, that those things, this was the microwave oven in the background, uh, because I didn't extract my head and shoulders, I've got to deal with that somehow. Um, kind of makes an interesting picture, but really don't want it there. Um, but now you can see why I did extract, uh, because uh, th the background is a little bit busy. But let's go ahead and see how much detail I can bring out here and still have a recognizable person. Um, I think I like that okay. And there you're done. Now. We have the same options that we had in Photoshop. I can drag this onto my paper here, make it as big as I want to. Oops, I forget. I don't have to hold down the shift key in Elements. There you go. Say OK. And now I can change this blend mode to multiply and the, back, the white will disappear. If you wanted to, if this was bothering you, and I would probably do this in this instance, I would switch to my eraser tool. Just I'm just using a hard round brush, making it a little bit bigger. I would just go ahead and get rid of this stuff right here, because it's really distracting from the image that I'm going to use. Maybe a little, oops, sorry. That was my mouse. Maybe get rid of all this right around here. Now, as I said, you could have cleaned up the image before you did it, but it is not always necessary. Sometimes it's a lot more work than you really want to do. Now, you also had the ability to make this into a brush if you wanted to save it for use, and it's the same as under Edit, Define Brush, and then go ahead and give it a name if you want to. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, by the way, don't limit your creativity to just using this on images of people. Try this on images of your pets, try it on landscapes, try it on flowers. As I said before, it's a great way especially to get use out of photographs that maybe weren't quite right, that maybe were a little blurry or the expression on people's faces uh, may not be exactly what you want. You still could breathe some life into those photographs. Thank you very much for joining me and I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial.